Okay, um, so we're doing 4.3, and maybe what would be helpful is to review last day stuff as we're going through this, but remember last day or yesterday we did y equals mx plus b? Let's build in some review. What's the m? Rise over run, so that's the slope. And what's the b value? That's the y-intercept, good. So we remember that and know that? Okay, so today we're doing this equation, ax plus by equals c, and this is in standard form. So know this, we're actually doing the same thing as yesterday, but we're using a different type of equation. So you know how yesterday, the y value was isolated and it was all by itself on the left side of the equation? Well, notice that today it's all tangled up, like the X and the Y are in there together. The Y is not isolated, but it is still the same equation. Like we could take all of the equations from yesterday and we could rearrange them to make them look like this. Does that make sense? So it's not actually anything new. We're looking at it from a different perspective, but it's still the same thing. So if we graph this, it's still a line. So let's go through the first one together. Uh, if we have an equation in this form, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step method to try to make this easier for us to work with. So the first step is we want to find the y-intercept. So last day or yesterday, the y-intercept was just given to us, right? This time it's not, but we learned something yesterday that was really helpful. What do we know about the x value at the y-intercept? Yeah, the x value there is equal to zero. Everybody good with that? Remember that from yesterday? That's gonna help us in this situation because in this equation, guess what I plug in for x here? zero and this time I'll have to do a little bit of work to find it but just like yesterday I can find my y-intercept from this. We love using this because what happens when you multiply something by zero? Yeah it just it's wiped out so it makes life easier for us so we try to use the intercepts whenever we can because it's easy right you don't have to but why not take the easy route? So if I have 5y equals 10 and I want y by itself, what would be my next move here? How do I get y by itself? You we divide it by 5 because algebra is all about opposites. So I would look here and say, okay, that's 5 times y. The opposite would be dividing by 5. Is that good so far? So then these would cancel. So after doing that, what is my y value? The y value is just 2. So I'm going to put this as an ordered pair, like, you know, with x and then y. What would be the coordinates? What would be the point? Yeah, 0, 2. And I'm going to put a box around it because we're going to use that. Actually, it's asking us to graph it, so let's start to do that here. 0, 2 would be a point that is right there. So far, so good? Okay, I think you're going to like this because, because I do. We'll see. I'll check in with Michelle and see where we're at. Step number two is we're going to find the x-intercept. And I didn't tell you what this is, but what do you think happens at the x-intercept? Ruby? y equals zero. Does everybody see the contrast between the two they're sort of like opposites if it's x intercept it would be crossing somewhere along here so do you see the reason that the y value must be zero because we didn't move up or down off of the axis right so we kind of do the same thing but this time we're plugging in um why am i having troubles you know what i'm having troubles with the colors okay so i should do this in pink so we have two x plus five times, I'm gonna plug in zero for y here. Everybody see where that's coming from? And that's equal to 10. So I'm taking our original equation, I'm rewriting it, and I'm just plugging in that zero. Yep, this is if we have an equation like this in standard form where that's all that we're given and we just wanna use it to figure out a couple of points to point. 
to graph it out. Sorry? Yeah, so here, do you guys see that that would be gone and canceled? So 2x equals 10, and if we want x by itself, do you see that we would divide both sides by 2? You're going to be tempted to skip steps, but I, I, it's up to you. But I will say that that's how, you know when you go to do an answer and you get it wrong, but you actually really knew how to do it? If you take the extra second or two to write out the steps, you'll get rid of those little mistakes. Because they hurt when you get something back and you feel like, oh, but I knew how to do that. So that's the way to eliminate that. It's Because to be honest, at this point, and especially as you move forward in math, the answer doesn't matter that much. It's the process and the steps, because in grade 10, 11, onwards, you're going to need those steps because they lead to something else. So do get into the habit of, of doing that. Yes, Lucas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you use, like, if you're trying to find the y and you use x is 0, mm -hmm. then if you're, going, if you're trying to find the x, do you use y as what you found out, or do you use y as 0? Y is 0, because that's a totally different point. Good question. So these are two different points. So actually, let's write the point. What would the point be if I wrote it that way here? We just found x equals 5. What would the coordinates look like? 5, 0. Everybody get that? Yep. So on here, do you see it'd be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. And then our whole goal was to graph this out. So do you see that I can take these two points? Whoa, what a shaky, ugly line. Pretend it's perfect. But we can extend the line, put the arrows at the end, and that's how we would graph this. So... I mean it when I say everyone always finds this hard. How are we doing so far? We're okay? The thing that most people find hard is the algebra. Are we okay with the algebra? Good? Just remember this. Algebra is all about opposites. So if you're adding, you're going to subtract to get rid of things. If you're multiplying, you're going to divide to get rid of things. So if you remember that, I think it'll make it easier to work with. Questions before we move on to the next one? The next one that's kind of similar. There's a bit more going on in the next one because we have some negatives. The equation's a bit more complicated. But we can take the same approach. What was the first step? Can someone tell me? Hmm. X equals zero. So do we see that that would be wiped out? So we would have 4y equals negative 12. What should I do to get y by itself? Divide both sides by 4, so that'll get rid of it. So what is y after doing that? Well, negative 3. Good. And what would the point look like if I wrote it as a set of, as an ordered pair? Negative. Zero, negative. 0, negative 3. Good. I'll put it in a box because we're going to need that. Actually, we can start to do that. 0, negative 1, 2, 3. Good. Then let's do step number two, which was what? I'm going to get rid of that. What should I do for step two? Find the x-intercept, and how do I do that? Plug in zero for y. Everybody good with that? I'm skipping a step there after I just finished telling you not to skip steps, but are we okay with just that first one? Because it's just a zero, I can rewrite this to say negative 3x equals negative 12. Good, we're gonna divide each side by negative three, which would get rid of this. So what is x equal to? Positive four. So if I wanna write this as a point, what is it? Four, zero. Everybody good with that? One, two, three, four, and zero. Okay, Michelle, isn't this kind of fun at this point? Do you? Can you tolerate it? Do you still hate it? What? It's in different colors. I have music playing. What more can I do? <laughs> okay. So, asking for all three, like, if it's got like a whole graph of x, y, and then three examples of x, like three x, and three y. We're getting there, Lucas. Hang on. 
Are we good with this so far? Not a single, like we're, we love this. Oh, come on, you guys. Okay, good. Um, okay, do you want, want to do a third point on here? Let's do, so Lucas, you mean, uh, okay, we'll get to it in a, we'll do the next one and then I'll get to what you were just asking in the one after that. I'm not even going to tell you this. This doesn't look anything like the other equations. Any ideas or guesses as to what this might be based on what we've been doing? If all you have is y equals negative 3, x is probably 0. You know what we're going to do? Remember, what do we call this thing again? Table of values. So let's do a table of values. What about when x is 0? What's y? Well, there's nowhere to plug in x, so it's got to be negative 3. What if x is negative 1? It's still negative 3. What if x is 5? Since there's nowhere to plug anything into x, y always has to be negative 3. Does that make sense? So let's look to see where we put the dot. So 0, negative 3, right? So there's my negative 3 there. Then I have negative 1, and that's still at negative 3. And then I had 5. I'm just writing the numbers wherever. But let's say we have 5. That's also at negative 3. So when I connect the dots, what kind of line is this? What do we call that? Horizontal line. Horizontal line. I'm going to do it in a different color. Excellent. Horizontal line when we have y equals something. What if it was like y equals 2? Let's do that on here, actually. Y equals 2. It would be 2 everywhere on the top. So it would go like this. Do we get that? OK, so I didn't show you this, but what do you think then a x equals negative 2 line would look like? Same thing, but it's a vertical line. So let's take a look at what the table of values for that would look like. If x is negative 2, what would the y value be? Anything. We could say 0, negative 2, 5, negative 2, negative 1. Doesn't matter what it is. It's always going to be negative 2. How dare I do it in the same color? There we go. Oh, God, look at what just... <laughs> okay. It isn't Friday. Oh, no. That was... Okay. It's okay. Not straight. <laughs> Are we good with this so far? Wow, we're flying through this. Fill in the table of values. Tell me, if x is 0, what's our y value? Well, so negative 2. Everybody good with that? So basically, that would be gone. We'd have negative y equals 2. How do we get rid of a negative? Yeah, so we do that by either dividing both sides by negative 1 or multiplying both sides by negative 1. Does that make sense? You don't actually have to do it, but I want you to understand where it's coming from. So that's the reason why we actually end up with y equals negative 2. It's only through multiplying or dividing by negative 1. So that's how that happens. So how about in the other one, when we have, like over here, y is equal to 0. So if y is gone, we'd have 1 half x equals 2. And um, well, how do we get rid of the 2 here? Multiply, right? Because right now it's like dividing by 2. So we would multiply both sides by 2. Yeah, so those would be gone, and x is equal to 4. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Because here, do you see, okay, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Do you see that I could rewrite this to say x over 2? That's the same thing as saying 1 over 2x. So the opposite is to get rid of the bottom is to multiply by 2. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say I asked you to come up with a third point down here, and I want you to be smart about which number you pick. 
you're allowed to pick whatever you want, what would be a smart choice to make our lives easier for the x value? We want to pick something for the x value. Uh, we already did it, but that would be the first go-to one because it's nice and easy. If we plug in 1, we can, but we're going to get 1 half minus y equals 2. So we're going to be dealing with a fraction. What would be, yeah, if we use 2, does everybody see the reason that 2 might be a good choice? I'm going to do the work over here in this lavender color. So if we have 1 half times 2 minus y equals 2, the reason I chose that is, do you see that we can just cross these off? Make sense? Yeah, so we would get, um, why am I using a different color? 1 minus y equals 2. So what do I do with the 1? It's 1 minus y. How do I just get rid of the 1? We subtract 1. Does that make sense to everyone? Because it's if it was y minus 1, we would add 1. But this is 1 minus y. So I just ignore the y for a minute and I, I look at the 1 and think if there's nothing in front of it, it must be a plus. So I've got to do the opposite, which is minus. So, so one. yeah, negative y equals 1. So y must be negative 1. So we could fill in negative 1. Does that help? Good? What if I wanted another one? What would be a good, smart? We could do 4. Is there another one that we could do? If 2 worked, do you see that negative 2 would also work? The key thing is we look at the denominator and you think, what numbers could I pick that's going to wipe out the denominator? That's a smart way to deal with fractions. Fractions often throw a lot of people off. So whenever possible, use your algebra skills to wipe out fractions in the first step. Good? Moving on. Oh, really? That's it? That's it. I am going to have you do all of them.